Have you noticed how 1984 is playing out in real life? <laughs> it's a horror film. Now at the end of this video, I'll share with you my perspective on what you can do to help make 1984 fiction again, because it makes a much better story than it does a reality. But in order to do that, it's helpful to recognize how 1984 is playing out in our world today. It's been said that you can't get out of a jail you don't know you're in. But once you know you're in a jail, you can recognize it and then you can do something to get out of it. And in this case, it's more like you can't get out of Orwell's 1984 horror film until you know you're in it. So let's take a look at how we're in it so we can get out of it. The Ministry of Truth is an expression of 1984's double think or double speak, saying one thing but meaning another which basically means the thing is typically the exact opposite of what it claims to be. And thus, the ministry of truth is actually the ministry of lies. We see you, media. In today's world, the most obvious attempt to make 1984's ministry of truth a nonfiction reality has been the disinformation governance board. Hi! We're here to tell you what you're allowed to think is true. But unfortunately, it was too obvious, which created enough backlash from we the people that the death of the disinformation governance board came to pass. Now they'll have to continue administering their lies in the less obvious ways that they already do that they also think we're too dumb to see, like the government, big tech, and the media. Wait just a minute there, JP. You just said that the media, big tech, and the government are propagating lies. I don't think so. They go to painstaking efforts to tell me on a very consistent basis that what they're shoving in my face 24-7 is the truth. Good point. But the organizations that try to control you with lies aren't going to just say, we're lying to you. Because that would be honesty. And honesty goes against the very nature of a liar. So expecting a dishonest entity to be honest with you is perhaps an unrealistic expectation. The Thought Police. A delightfully benevolent, tyrannical arm of the Ministry of Truth. Just take a look at the censors and fact checkers always trying to police your thoughts and you'll be looking at the Thought Police. And not only that, but they're also policing people with punishment along the way for thinking the wrong thoughts with shadow banning, deplatforming, and media smear campaigns. It's great. Double speak. <laughs> Again, double speak is designed to propagate the very thing that it claims to be against in order to get the masses to consent to it rather than resist it. And here are some fun double speak examples playing out in our world today. Give up your freedoms for your protection. Censorship saves democracy. Racial equity to fight racism. Misinformation. Conspiracy theories. And going to war to create peace. What fun examples! Let's take a quick look at each one. Give up your freedoms for your protection is double speak for give up your freedoms so you're not protected from us. Let's terrorize them with fear to get them to be compliant with what we want. Whoa, what a harmful thing to do to people. No, it's for their protection. Oh, well, what a helpful thing to do to people. But it's all for your protection. What the Ministry of Truth probably doesn't want you to know is that the walls that protect you will soon imprison you. And get this, some wackos out there would say that the most dangerous thing you could ever do is give up your freedoms. Censoring to save democracy is doublespeak for censoring to destroy democracy. Do not question election integrity. Why not? because we said so, and this is a democracy. The Biden administration has been proven to be instructing Facebook on what to censor under the guise of saving our democracy. And more recently, in Elon Musk's bid to acquire Twitter in order to transform it from a censorship platform to a free speech platform, the thought police warn us about the dangers of this and tell us we need more censorship in order to uphold our democracy. Huh as a democracy can only exist in a society that has free exchange of thoughts and ideas, and therefore free speech, don't think too much about that, or else recognizing the double speak of the two contradictory ideas will have you tempted to start thinking for yourself. Racial equity is double speak for racism. And that would be dangerous, 
Right, New York Times? What if you found out that critical race theory and other expressions of racial equity are actually forms of racism trying to prey on good people who want to do good things? And the problem stems from people letting the thought police tell them what good things are rather than letting their own conscience determine what good things are. Then they become a useful idiot perpetuating racism rather than eliminating it. But JP, why would the corrupt powers that be want to perpetuate racism? <laughs> I know it's weird to think that evil people would want to perpetuate something that's evil. But stay with me on this one. Racism equals division, and a divided society is a controllable society. And controlling society is perhaps what the corrupt powers that be want, rather than having the people be in control of their own society. Misinformation is doublespeak for truth. We're going to fact check you and censor speech to protect you from misinformation. What if you found out that what's labeled misinformation is actually truth? And the thought police labeling things as misinformation isn't meant to protect you from anything but rather protects them from you being empowered by truth. Conspiracy theories are doublespeak for reality. What should we do when there's an inconvenient truth for us that people are starting to catch on to? How about we slap a slanderous label on it that smears the character of anyone tempted to believe such a thing? I know. We can call it a conspiracy theory. That's great. We can use that on any truth we don't want people to believe. It's not very creative of us, but it will make them look like a moronic nut job anytime we call them that. If you pay attention to the narrative, why do conspiracy theories prove to be more true than reality oftentimes? Conspiracy theorists keep getting things right. Experts say that's dangerous. Dangerous to get things right? Thank you, Thought Police. I'll go back to sleep now. Go to war to create peace is doublespeak for go to war to eliminate peace. The authoritarians like going to war. Whether their agenda is control, profit, or both, who knows? But in order to get the masses to consent to going to war, they have to get them to believe that there's a good virtuous reason for going to war. Enter the doublespeak. You want peace, don't you? Yeah. Then we have to go to war. Okay. Otherwise, without preying on the good conscience of people with predatory doublespeak, the people would resist the war efforts because it doesn't feel good in their soul and thus the agenda of the authoritarians would be much harder for them to materialize. Creating a common enemy to control people. In the film, the Ministry of Truth would get people enraged about a horrible, despicable enemy. The enemy didn't actually exist. The corrupt powers that be didn't actually need an enemy. They just needed people to believe there was an enemy because that allowed them to persuade people based on emotions. Control a person's emotions, and you control their mind. What are some modern day examples? Yeah, I, I support the current thing, and therefore the enemy is whatever opposes the current thing. I stand with Ukraine, so I hate Russia. That's cool. Did you know Ukraine doesn't allow gay marriage? And they also didn't allow black people to evacuate the country simply because they're black. And also the president had his political rivals thrown in prison so he could have a dictatorship over the country that we're told is a democracy. Or the current thing is, get the shot. You're a good person if you do. And we need to round up the anti-jabbers and throw them into concentration camps. Or, wow, BLM is the current thing. We need to defund the police. <laughs> That's cool. Why don't we defund the thought police? Here's what you can do about it. Okay, so if that's some of the 1984 jail playing out in real life that we'd otherwise be in if we don't recognize it, what can you and I do to help make 1984 fiction again? Well, here's five quick thoughts on that that I think will make a difference according to my delusional perspective, but don't take my word for it. Please use your own discernment and your own critical thinking. Number one, take control of your mind. Your sovereignty depends on it. Number two, avoid predatory sources of news that are designed to manipulate your thoughts. This means that your TV will function best when it's in the off position. Number three, when something doesn't make sense to you or it feels off or seems contradictory, trust your instincts instead of just going along with it. Number four, when you hear the narrative, pay attention to what they try to get you to think is true and what they try to get you to think is false. And then play reverse psychology on their doublespeak 
and you'll probably be pointed in a more truthful direction. Number five, stop outsourcing. Let what you stand for and what you protect against be determined by your own conscience and discernment. Trust yourself. And when you find yourself not going along with the herd, take that as a sign that you're probably not being a sheep. With that said, I think if we all do our part in taking back control of our minds, we can collectively make 1984 fiction again. Because a film is much better to watch than to live. Stay free, my friend. <laughs> <laughs>